we are one in the spirit and we gather together as the body of Christ around this time of worship. Welcome.
When all that's within me feels dry This is my prayer and my hunger and need My God is the God who provides Good morning and welcome to worship at River Road United Methodist Church my name is Pastor Darcy Johnson. We're so thankful that you have joined with us during this vital and important time, wherever you are coming from and however your week has been. We welcome you to this sacred time. Speaking of from wherever you are, we invite you in the comment section to let us know from where you are worshiping and to send a greeting to your church family. So again, welcome. A church update, I'd like to share some blessed news. Yesterday at our church, we had some church members cross the threshold into the Holy Covenant of Marriage yesterday. JT and Brooke uh, were married and we ask God's blessing upon them. We're privileged to be church with them and ask that God will be with them every step of the way in the adventure that is sacred marriage. So congratulations. A church update, uh, we will be offering in-person worship options throughout the month of September on the 6th, 13th, and 20th, and then a drive-in Holy Communion on the 27th. If that is part of your comfort level, um, we hope that you will join with us, and we'll be sending an invitation to those worship experiences um, shortly. And again, hope that you will join us, and the online worship is still available for you every Sunday and coming to you. So. Um, prayers and blessings with each of you, however you choose to engage um, with the central act of worship in our church right now. A missions update, please continue to bring food items and drop them off outside the church at the keypad door entrance. Our community food pantry partners continue to communicate to us as there is an increase in the number of people and families seeking food assistance. So thank you for continuing to support that ministry. And also, of course, thank you for continuing to give it your tithes and your offerings because we're able then to lend some of these resources to support kingdom purposes in our community, in our city, in the Commonwealth, and throughout the nation. So thank you so much. And now, a time with young disciples. I invite you all to come and join with me as we learn more about what it means to follow Jesus. And today we're going to learn a scripture and um, from God's word from the Bible. And the scripture is from Psalm 146. Can you say Psalm 146? It's great. And here's how the first verse and a half of Psalm 146 goes. It says, and we're going to do some hand motions. So join with me. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. I will praise the Lord. Let's do that one more time. Praise the Lord, O oh, my soul. I will praise the Lord. You know, when we praise the Lord, that means that we communicate, we say how wonderful God is and what God means to us. And so let's, let's try some praising God this morning together. Are you ready? God, you are amazing. Jesus, you are faithful. God, you are gracious. God, you are kind. And God, you are loving. And Jesus, you are always with us. These are just some of the ways that you can give voice to praise God and to thank God for all the ways that God is with us. And I can assure you, when you speak out praises to God, it can fill you with a greater measure of joy and of peace when we praise God together. And so this week, look for opportunities to just say, God, you're amazing. God, you are faithful. And we'll extend that positive, God-filled joy within ourselves and to the other people around us. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. I will praise the Lord. Psalm 146. Let's pray together. If you'll repeat after me. Loving God, we praise you today. Oh my soul, I will praise you. In the name of Jesus, 
Amen. All right, let's toss up those prayers. Ready? One, two, three. And there go praises to God everywhere and to everyone. We continue to worship as we sing and as we praise and honor God and glorify the Spirit this morning. And also, um, we prepare to overhear the scripture read to us by the Rinker family. Sunday. It's Daniel Ranker here, your children's ministry director, and I'm here this Sunday to read the scripture for you all. It is from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes and mortals in whom there is no help. When their breaths depart, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, and who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, River Road Church. Lindsay Bainham here. It's so good to be with you uh, and worship with you across time and space. I pray God's blessings to you and your family uh, in this time of pandemic. Would you pray with me? Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, there's nothing better than a great playlist. Whether it's for that race you have coming up or an epic road trip with friends or that mix that gets you through a tough day or a tough commute, a great playlist soothes the soul. Each song builds on the last and leads to the next. You have the ability to draw from a deep and wide place of varying genres and tempos. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I can wear out a particular song. I'll play it on repeat for what seems like forever. I'm learning every note, committing every word to memory, and sitting in that song evokes something in my spirit. When songs are memorized, written on our hearts, there's this deep knowing that comes alive when we hear it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Maybe it's the rhythmic beats of Hamilton, or the piercing lyrics from Taylor Swift's new album, or you can't seem to let go of that Fleetwood Mac song. Or maybe it's the song that your mom always sang. There's something powerful in a song, in a lyric, in the dance that comes alive when words and songs and playlists are strung together. Friends, we have the ultimate playlist at our very fingertips, the Psalms. 
These passages, often set to song throughout time, are embedded in our scriptures and capture the full range and emotion of the human life and this life of faith. I love the Psalms because they follow closely the ups and downs of a particular people, Israel, and they draw us into their lyrical richness. They provide words when we have none. How many times have you been at a service of life and resurrection and the words of the 23rd Psalm were read or they were sang and they were like a balm to your grieving soul? You cannot read Psalm 53 without understanding the deepness of David's soul after the incident with Bathsheba and Uriah. Psalm 150 is hype. It is pure joy packed in short verses. And so the Psalms are this perfect playlist for days that move slow or life that goes by too quickly. They are the perfect soundtrack for the life of faith that is grounded in God's goodness, God's justice, God's love, and God's mercy. And so this week in the Summer in Psalms series, we're diving in to Psalm 146. Grab your Bible or pull it up on your phone um, as, as we explore it together this morning. And so 146, we're approaching the end of the book. It's one of the last four chapters that are often considered in a set because praise is the driving theme to the very last word. It begins, 146 begins in an exhausting and awesome way. It starts like this. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. As long as there is breath in our lungs, everything in our being will praise the vast entirety of the creator. It's exhilarating and exhausting and difficult to imagine all at once. The artist begins with this emphatic declaration and then turns our eyes and our ears and all of our attention to God. Because the psalmist writes, trust in kings and mortals is fleeting. It will fade away. Happy, the psalmist says, happy are those who go all in, who devote their entire selves to God, the creator and the Lord of heaven and earth. And this happiness is not shallow or wanting. It is a flourishing way of being. It is about salvation and the overwhelming love of God. And so this delight that we have and we find in God leads to hope that the world will turn upside down, that it will look different because of who God is. You can hear the song of 146 growing louder as the writer depicts God's vision for creation. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. This psalm just radiates justice and mercy. The ultimate reversal of status. In these verses, the psalmist boldly names God's actions that kings either could or would not do. The psalm celebrates the need for justice and for the lowly to be exalted in God's kingdom here on earth. Psalm 146 isn't just an epic song. I believe it is a summation and purpose for our life's work, for our vocation, for our calling in this life of faith. Psalm 146 is an invitation to, it, to offer our entire selves in praise and thanksgiving to the entirety of God and God's creation. And the good news is that the goodness doesn't stop there. We don't simply observe what God is doing. 
No, we actively participate in God's hope for the world. Prisoners set free, eyes opened, a home for the orphan and the widow, welcoming of the stranger, and a world where justice rolls down like an ever-flowing stream. My friends, to become a part of God's work means being part of a greater way of life and ethic. It is to ask ourselves, how do we, Christ's body, the church, incarnate, make real, <laughs> inhabit and exude the grace and courage and trustworthiness and passionate justice for the world that we hear in Psalm 146? How does our happiness, our deep abiding, flourishing relationship with God impact how we see and live and be with others? I was at a workshop last weekend, all about relationships, the Enneagram and relationships. And after a few sessions, I think we started to realize that a lot of us had brought people that we wanted to fix, <laughs> rather than recognizing what about our motivations and behaviors might need tending to. And when this realization came, uh, the instructor looked at us through the Zoom and said, we can only relate now. We can only control whether we show up, whether we are present here and now. We can only be mindful of how we respond, how we act, how we engage with others. And that will control what we might receive from other people. We can only relate now. That was my biggest takeaway from the weekend. And so when I read the words of Psalm 146, I think it's about relating because of who we are, who God has created us to be, and beyond who we are. It's about reaching out, not to fix or help someone from a distance. No, Psalm 146 is the exhilarating and exhausting work of truly being in relationship here and now relationship with God, our creator, and relationship with one another. That is a strand of this beautiful tapestry that is the Christian life. And I believe it is part of, I believe it is our part in living into God's hope for creation. So I want you to put 146, Psalm 146 on repeat this week. Maybe read it each morning or each evening. Maybe when you grab your lunch, you read it, it's 10 verses. Put it on repeat this week. Listen for how you might step into God's vision for the world. Be courageous to step into this happy and flourishing way of life because it will change your life by the grace of God. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you for the psalmists that sing your praise and invite us into that song. Lord, I pray that your spirit would give us courage to speak out, to reach out, to relate with others for your sake, that they might know your love and your justice and your mercy. God, may we be reminded of this invitation this week. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
We now join in this significant time of corporate prayer, joining our hearts and minds together and seeking the will of God. As we prepare to pray, I invite you to list any prayer needs or concerns or praises that you might have in the comment section, and then your church family and community will hold these people and circumstances and places in prayer in the coming week. Let us pray. Oh God, as we worship you this morning, we praise and we magnify your name. Lord of heaven and earth, Christ who has died, risen and will come again, spirit who gives us new life and fresh forgiveness, we glorify you. We praise you for the beauty of your earth, for the verdant green of summer and the tips of trees hinting us towards autumn. We praise you for renewing hope and sustaining strength. We praise you for your provision and your goodness. We praise you for the depths you went to in Jesus to reach out, hold us close and redeem us. Lord, we join our voices with the psalmist this morning to say, I will praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. Lord, we acknowledge our need for you and thus the need to confess our sins. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not loved our neighbor and have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, O oh God, when we have followed the path of temptation or swayed beneath the influences of the evil one. I invite you to take a moment to confess your sins before God this morning. May you hear the good news of the gospel reverberate in the very core of your being that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and this proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Hallelujah and amen. And as forgiven people, our next step is to pray for others and thus open ourselves up to be a part of God's kingdom hopes and works. And so, holy God, we ask that your Holy Spirit will lead and guide those who govern. We ask that your wisdom will be with leaders of nations, countries, towns, and cities. And we pray God for all who are leading during this time in healthcare, in schools, in public service, in business, and within faith communities. Give wisdom and help us all to remember that we are both held by you and held accountable to you. God, guide us in the way of justice and integrity for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray that you may tend to those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May you be with the tired or the weary and give them rest for their souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, Lord, that your spirit will keep a sacred vigil with those who are dying and preparing to transition from this life through death onto life eternal in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those in poverty and those who are struggling to meet their basic needs and needs of their family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all families as they navigate this school year, for teachers, for administrators, and for students. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for an end to this pandemic, for a safe and effective vaccine, and for a strong dose of your mercy, so that during this time of heightened irritability and frustration, we might choose again and again to offer your grace to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the health of our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for your church in its witness. May we hold fast to truth and even tighter to your love 
as you told us, Jesus, that the world might know that we belong to you because of the love that we have for one another. Holy God, we ask all of this in the name of Christ, our Redeemer. Holy God, we ask all of this by the Holy Spirit who activates your love in us. And Holy God, we ask that you, this love may be like a seed scattered, manifesting in small and unexpected ways and manifesting into the greatness that is you. May your love take root in our lives and may we walk in faith and trust. And now we return all of these prayers to you, praying the prayer that you first gave to us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And now church, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. As we ready ourselves to move into a new day, into a new week. Let us put our trust in God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let's go be the church. Amen.